seems to me like problems come home to roost for certain people that have been playing a game against an Australian Imperial Crown for quite some time. And it seems to me that they are being caught out very openly in their game because it's not an honest or truthful game. And this is becoming apparent all across the country when legal professionals are starting to really consider what's been put on the table. And this is difficult for a lot of them because this fractures a belief system that they had most of their lives to sort of fracture into a reality which I think most of them would want in replace of what this communist bullshit agenda actually is. And considering that we have now caught them out at some really severe and heinous criminal offences, it's only to stand that many of these barristers and lawyers now will start to speak up and stand behind what is a true line of authority in this country, and they certainly have a right to do so. It's clear that justices would take up this line of authority, given the statements of Justice Lonergan and the laying out of what would be considered an actual international war crime committed on Australian soil by not only New South Wales police, but New South Wales magistrates, courts, magist um, New South Wales corrective services, and New South Wales forensic mental health services. And th this leads to something that's very, very heinous in itself. But as we unravel this apartheid that is being created on purpose on this soil, it, it seems to unravel a larger and deeper problem with these activists and this communist agenda that seems to seed behind what is trying to unravel or undermine your executive branch of government. And the problem here being is, is that that executive branch already undermined by a, a foreign curial power and that a, a naked ownership in this matter puts a right there on the table internationally in, in relation to that. Whereas this communist agenda and this debacle that we are watching currently um, is turned into a legal nightmare and referendum or not, success of success of rend, referendum or not, that there is a legal quandary out the other side that will undo all of it. And I'm sure the people are on the verge of standing up and physically saying no more at the same time. That the country is being led to a point of being destabilised on an international battlefield where you see the Ukraine and this war machine bullshit that we spoke about in the Soldier X videos. And this is all combined together. And if they destabilise you as a people in your minds and allow this to occur over your country, that they are destabilising you on a world stage. And this is where soldiers of the ADF know that Pink Day or Purple Day it is not going to help you in your national security. It is actually a direct attack on your national security. So we continue on this legal foray rather than a political one and keep going through the legal quandary that these people are finding themselves in today, not realising at the time they were actually committing heinous international criminal offences, as well as federal and state offences here in Australia. There has been 10 years of expert advisory groups, of parliamentary groups, of discussions with constitutional lawyers, of discussions with First Nations people. There is a lot of information already in the public arena. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So these people have been conspiring for 10 years to be set up with corporations and land title trusts to those corporations 
and an increasing freehold title across your entire country and ATAGI and all these departmental groups and special grants and all of these fisted handouts of your billions and trillions of dollars over the years and this has been a 10-year plan to get to this point where they can undermine the very constitution itself. And th this lady here has demonstrated herself to be one of the nod ladies of the parliament, as in always falling asleep, never knows what the hell she's doing, keeps fucking up, always speaks like grandpa lady, grandma uh, and shouldn't really be there like it's time that we recognize that these special people uh, are staying in the parliament for a reason because they don't want to open the door to the working class yeah there is a lot of information out there but much of it is conflicting Australians need to know before they vote what the specific model the government has in mind but the Prime Minister can't, or rather won't, answer that question. This is the Marcia Langton, Tom Carver yes. co-design process. That was under the former parliament. Is that the sort of model you're, there you're will in be, favour of? There will be ongoing discussion about the. But some greater detail. What is... Well, there will be debate, David. Understand there will that. be, and you're raising it here now, mm. about what form it takes. But will you make clear what you support in this debate? David, that is a matter for consultation. Um, will it be elected, the body, the voice? That, that is up to okay. uh, First Nations people to go through that process. Hilarious, isn't it? The reporter's like, yeah, right, fuck. Not, not really getting any answers out of this. Uh, yep, OK, just preempting. Yeah, OK, yeah, got your elbow. Yep, OK. Rabble on. That, yep, yeah, okay, gotcha, no, another bullshit. It's kind of funny. And Elbow's not given one straight answer in the last six months. It falls to the media to hold the government to account for its proposed change. But what if the media has already picked a side? The challenge for now will be keeping the debate focused on the proposed constitutional change, reassuring Conservatives that Parliament will ultimately determine the shape of the consulting body. That was Laura Tingle from the ABC and apparently she thinks it's her job to reassure Conservatives the body will just play a consulting role. See what they do when you start to have a different opinion to Laura Tingle on this issue? It won't be long until you are accused of spreading misinformation. What do you know about her, Paul Farrell? What's her deal, Paul Farrell? Shall we put that image up about Paul Farrell and the kingdom and the whole recognition that what is going on is actually going on? Because this is the ABC that is the arm of the Prime Minister and Cabinet displaying its full colours right now. So... We'll just let them blab a little bit and then we'll show you something. Nation. The ABC seems obsessed with pushing the line that details don't matter and anyone who disagrees is compromised. All of the detail will be worked out afterwards because you can't put something in legislation, you know, enshrined in the Constitution. You've got with every I made and every T crossed and then take it to the, pu to the public See, Pat Anderson, we, we as Australians won't put up with your dumb bullshit. You're as dumb as fuck. And the swearing, so what anymore? Because I, I'm watching an absolute clown show where they've let grandma into the most serious document in our nation's history it's our founding document now if this was the american constitution and you wanted to even touch that gu gun amendment they'd bring their guns so hard on you you'd be like what the fuck and you're treating our constitution like play school and we ain't gonna have it anymore 
Uh, and this is the bottom line, Prime Minister. You're now dealing with a nation that recognises exactly what that constitution means to them, their ANZAC, and the line of authority in their king's domain. Uh, and that becomes a problem for you when you fail to recognise that the people themselves are waking up to your criminal offences. Uh, and this is becoming more apparent as we go through, that you have conspired for longer than a decade to undermine the Constitution even further by seeding our people with a belief that they had a power over and above the line of authority that gave the Constitution authority in the very first. And this is your stark revelation, Elbow, in that we recognize your war crimes straight up, very, very easy, clickety-click. You have committed crimes against humanity in the process of a referendum at which you sought to undermine. And that in itself is a criminal offense. So you've not only created a national criminal offence over a referendum, you have created an international offence over a referendum. And if you yourself insist on asking for detail, you might not just be spreading misinformation, you might actually be a racist, according to this segment broadcast on the ABC. Quite clearly, the only people asking for detail are people who oppose it. So I think there's two very succinct things that you can say about that. One, that it's being railroaded by the Liberal Party because of the rednecks and racists in their own ranks. And it's two, um, that there is enormous amounts of detail there. So this woman screams, I'm so good, I got the gold stars in my indoctrination centre. And that's about the sum of it, really. And now she's the professor of the University of Technology, Sydney, promoting this woke bullshit to her students. What what would you call students in this manner? Fodder. <laughs> because who's going to believe someone that, A, presents themselves this way, like a cockatoo on steroids, and then has an ideology that calls other people racist for just not believing in what you believe, when what you believe in is not just racist, it's communist in ideology, and it was seeded into your stupid mind at some point in your left hard life. And not surprisingly, John Barron, the host, didn't even challenge that fame-hungry academic to justify her disgusting slur. And you know the ABC just loves a free and open debate. So now we're in the new phase. When do you hope to legislate this question that will be put to the public? And is it possible to go forward to a referendum uh, without, without public money for a no campaign? That's a journalist asking the government to dispense with the custom of allocating money to the no campaign because she's worried it might fully inform voters. So the ABC has already proven itself multiple times to us. But here is an email from Four Corners to the United Kingdom of Australia, making it full well known to the ABC itself that a line of authority exists in the Constitution that they themselves are very openly here trying to undermine. Now, what's suspect here is that the whole entire ABC has this agenda and it seems to be seeded from Prime Minister and Cabinet and the Federal Executive Council. And that's that communist agenda that we're seeing with Adam Bant and Lydia and elbow and somewhat the liberals too but i think pauline's kind of nudged him in the side and said oi there's a reality on the table and legally we're fucked and it actually got worse with the abc painting a very clear picture that if you take issue with the wording of this constitutional amendment you are immoral and harming indigenous communities 
Are you worried about a no campaign and the impact that its potential success, obviously referendums are very difficult to pass, may have on your community that has already suffered so much? What impact might this referendum process have on vulnerable communities, particularly if there is a vocal no campaign? Yep, some are already concerned a no campaign will expose bigoted views and cause further harm to First Nations people. Community members are already concerned any vote no campaign is going to cause hurt to First Nations people. So if you disagree with this Labor move, you are racist, spreading misinformation and are just generally a bad person who hurts Indigenous people. These tactics are manipulative. And specifically... No, 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 no. Again, make no mistake. These tactics are criminal. These are the tactics of communist criminals who think they have a blasé power to be able to do these things. And half of these reporters don't even know what they're saying. They're reading from a script or a teleprompter and it's seeded into the greater population by a bunch of lackeys just sitting at a desk reading what they've been told to read. ...designed to make it difficult for the average person to simply ask for detail. But if I do that or you do that, apparently we are just conducting a scare campaign to frighten simple-minded Australians who cannot form opinions on their own. Yeah, and I think there is a wellspring of support in the community for a hopeful question, for the symbolic gesture of recognising the first Australians in the constitution. So you're right, you then got to make sure that any of the scare campaigns, that people do understand this so that they're not frightened by it, because it's easy to frighten people. It's easy to, to knock off referendums or scare campaigns. We've seen that happen before. I think the general population would like to do this. So we have to sort of calm the farm, if you like, calm everyone down around what what it actually means and reassure them. Got, got to calm the farm, says, says uh, husbandry and midwifery woman Fran. Just got to calm all the cattle, make sure they moo along with their jabby jabbies, right? Uh, they need to be inoculated and be calmed so that they can be referendumed. This is a kind of sad reality that we live in, that this kind of twisted mentality of people exist in our outer society and are actually promoted to be some sort of thing to look up to. And Fran Kelly is definitely not something to be looked up to. This whole entire self-righteous attitude of questioning a campaign wherein they haven't even defined what clause of the Constitution they want to change. And if you asked Fran Kelly, this Muppet, what clause of the Constitution they wanted to change, she wouldn't know. She, she wouldn't know her own Constitution to be able to define any of the clauses in it and then at a legal position define what any of them mean to be able to define why or not they should be changed. And, and given that, that, there should be no referendum in place right now because the mindset of the people isn't in the question, is it? The, the question should really be, which clause of the Constitution do you want to change and what specific change do you want to make to that clause? Like, what words do you want to remove and what new words do you want to put in? These very simple questions without going into all your waffle about all your historical record and all your hoo-ha and all your wah-wah about how you got hurt and, and all these pathetic greeny things. No one gives a fuck. Give us a bottom line. What, what specifically do you want to do to our constitution? Because at, at this point in time, you've not only opened yourself up to a civil war for acting this way, but if you in any way succeed, given that the general modus of the population says, get the fuck out of our constitution, you, you're opening yourselves up to a longer term civil war as a minority population, wherein you're going to create racism upon your yourselves be hated so much and then see the worst end of the stick in the long run and that that's an unfortunate thought 
given that we know that it's our constitution as the Australian Imperial Crown anchored in the King's Domain, anchored in the Shrine of Remembrance, anchored to the Stone of Remembrance, and there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. There are too many people on the ground right now realising this fact. And Paul Farrell is very openly here in an email from the organisations of this stupid ABC propaganda arm for the Prime Minister and Cabinet, definitely defining the United Kingdom of Australia as being in existence and acknowledging the court document at which he held in his hands that defined that as so. This is a sad reality. So obviously a criminal offence has occurred because they're in full knowledge of it beforehand. It's not the ABC's job to sell this to the public. It's not the ABC's job to do PR for the government or advocate for the Yes campaign or any campaign for that matter. And Fran Kelly and all of her taxpayer-funded activists at the ABC might not want you to ask questions about how much power this new body could wield, but we have to. If we all vote yes, this will be enshrined in Constitution. We must know the details prior to a vote, and that is the very essence of what a journalist should do. Otherwise, we might vote for something that looks very different in practice. Very different in practice. We might vote for something that turns out to be very different in practice when the ABC are in full knowledge of the line of authority established in your ANZAC as defined on the Supreme Court record. They are in full, full, full knowledge of the United Kingdom of Australia being the naked owner of the very constitution that they are right now trying to change. And you can see by the inside knowledge of the ABC, their modus operandi is to do anything to stop that de jure United Kingdom of Australia from being seen by anybody in Australia because it is the true line of authority in that constitution and defines all of these people to be the actual war criminals that they are. So it is no wonder that the propaganda machine is in full force here trying to obfuscate from the reality that there is a, a legal precedence on the table that could not only undo everything that's been done here, but could point them out to be the war criminals they are and see them marched before the courts for their Hague Convention criminal offences. Along with more than that, there's quite a plethora of international offences that are going on on an international stage at this very moment. When we imagine what a voice would look like, I think it does need to have teeth. It does need to be feared and revered. It needs to be a building. It needs to be an institution that has much more than a voice. It has um, some control um, and some autonomy. But it was, wasn't recommended by the Uluru Statement. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, but I think um, leaving the detail quite um, opaque in terms of what it could do into the future, um, what could happen if it goes to the High Court, um, we've spoken about this stand uh, you know I think we need to imagine that this body has has much more than just an advisory role it must be feared and revered that is a direct quote I'm not the one conducting a scare campaign here the ABC has that space covered it's very clearly direct propaganda for the elbow government and the ABC directive comes out of Prime Minister and Cabinet. And that directive comes from the Federal Executive Council. And this is why they've got the Indigenous thinking that they can somehow manipulate the executive branch of the Australian Imperial Crown's constitution. And since this has been defined on court record along with actual international war crime, you can see what's going on from inside the propaganda house that is the Australian Broadcasting 
Commission, a, a government paid organisation that uses taxpayer money to get things done. Minister Linda Burney came to Albany and Rebecca Stevens hosted her for an invitation only event to discuss the voice. The, the really big push tonight was um, that we have to do this, we have to do this. There was a lot of emotional blackmail. She says they have never recognised First Nation people. and they This is where someone like Linda Burney, under oath to the Parliament, needs to be charged for lying, for outright lying and causing what would be called a conspiracy and conspiring with others to portray this lie and it is an outright lie because the question is they can't be rec they're not recognized in the constitution section 127 was removed allowing them to be recognized in the constitution allowing them to be recognized in the constitution 1967 referendum was all about allowing them to be recognised in the constitution, just along with everyone else. And ever since then, they've wanted to undermine and take from our constitution more than everyone else. Uh, and this is Linda Burney on a uh, world tour, pushing this ideology on everyone she meets in that they're not recognised in the constitution when just like Lydia, c clearly she's under oath to the very constitution that she has a voice to. They need to be recognised in the big book of law. I wanted details. Earlier in the minister's presentation, she said people are getting bogged down in details. Basically, don't worry about the details, just vote yes. She told me that I was wrong on the figures and I came back at her in front of the whole audience and said, no, I'm not. So Linda Burney is the Twitter queen of AI. She uses the Twitter API like it's going out of fashion to push propaganda out the propaganda streams like a media whore. This is what a criminal looks like. This is what an actual communist criminal looks like. Linda Burney is the grandma of deluded grandmas that can't keep her words together in the parliament and is manipulated and controlled by outside powers. This is exactly what a criminal looks like. Human Rights Commissioner and eminent constitutional lawyer Lorraine Finlay has argued the proposed change, quote, inserts race into the Australian constitution in a way that undermines the foundational human rights principles of equality and non-discrimination. No such thing as the Australian Constitution. There is the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act, where at Clause 9 you'll find the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution. There's no Australian Constitution. And this lawyer should know these things. And she's kind of partly right in that it inserts race and the principles of human rights do not appear in the Constitution in any way, shape or form. Human rights were installed under the Human Rights Commission Act 1984 after the Letters Patent 1984 took a curial power over your country and made you subordinate to a foreign curial power that gave you human or slave rights. You do not have human rights defined in your constitution whatsoever. And this, this whole entire uh, legal fraternity, treating this like a game, treating this like it is not a, a factor of law, and treating this not as serious as it is, is demonstrating to you that they're either deluded and don't know the actual facts of a line of authority in a constitution and therefore can't be constitutional lawyers in the first place, or they are, as I said in previous episodes, directly attacking your constitution in the belief that you're too dumb to pick up on what they're doing.
And that's the bottom line here. And I'm making a direct accusation of many of these constitutional lawyers that they are either ignorant of a lot of things at law, meaning that they cannot be defined as constitutional lawyers merely because academia says so. Well, I guess that means the race commissioner would cast his labels on Commissioner Findlay despite the fact that her comment is anchored in fact and respectfully expressed. Commissioner Tan can't expect Australians to sign off on a mechanism to provide different democratic rights for some Australians on the basis of their race without talking about the R word. It should be done politely and with genuine care for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians because... That's how we treat other human beings with respect. But on no day of the week should we simply avoid the subject or pretend that this referendum isn't about race. Australia's Race Discrimination Commissioner, Chin Tan, has warned political leaders and the media to steer clear of making race the focus of the Voice to Parliament debate. He's given an interview saying... The referendum by itself, from my perspective, from a human rights perspective, and from the jurisprudence point of view, is not about a race issue and ought not to be, he said. But it will be by the way we characterise it. It will be by the way we promote it. No wonder we have human rights failures in this country when an idiot like this is in charge. Now, if we go back to the Constitution in its original wording, section 127 said this, in reckoning the numbers of the people of the Commonwealth or of a state or other part of the Commonwealth, Aboriginal natives shall not be counted. They were not to be counted. They were sovereign people. So when we get to this Human Rights Commissioner, why are they no longer sovereign people? And why wouldn't this become a race issue wherein other parts of the Constitution in Quick and Garren, for instance, describe the Aboriginal peoples as a race of peoples, with which they allowed to be counted in 1967, giving them a voice along with everyone else in the Constitution. So why the need now to change the Constitution even further if we removed Clause 127 in 1967, giving them equal rights to everyone else in the Constitution? Why would they seek to undermine the Constitution and why would they be seeded with misinformation or an untruthful knowledge which they now wholly believe in because of their activism? And why isn't the Human Rights Commissioner pulling up on the fact that there is a naked ownership in the country and there are two crowns on the table as there always were given his role as a human rights commissioner. And if this is the case, then under the Human Rights Commission Act 1984 and under schedules A, B, C and D, you've done a grave failure of your job and your knowledge as a constitutional lawyer in this matter. Well, fancy that. A referendum to provide a body in our nation's constitution to advise on issues relevant to one racial cohort and consisting only of people of one racial cohort, selected by only people who share that racial attribute, is, according to Commissioner Tan, not a race issue. Well, thank heavens the Commissioner has set that one straight. He followed it up with, the concern I have is when the debate degenerates into a more racialised discussion, that, for me, is always a dangerous sign. It's always never acceptable because it leads to something else. And it gives confidence to people to embark on a journey which they ought not to. 
the always. So this idiot tells them to not embark on a journey they're coming to the end of, where they've created a situation of reverse apartheid in a country where blacks have it over everyone else. And this is where this Human Rights Commissioner should have pulled this up years ago, many, many, many years ago, when it was first seeding its roots in the parliament, when Lydia was first fist-bumping and doing all of her rhetoric against her oath and the line of authority in that constitution. And by saying that it's not race-based, then what, what is the line of authority in that constitution when it comes to white Australia and the constitution they forged here that allowed all these other races from around the world to come and join in at the pleasure of our crown, of our crown, not an Aboriginal crown, an Australian imperial crown, and a, a, a crown of which forged this document in the very first, putting us first in time and first at law in this case. So why is the Human Rights Commissioner failing in his duties to recognise his position as a administrator and overseer of rights to all of those wards of state they keep in their pauperisms. Never part is him, not me. He called for a very clear reflection, particularly by our leaders, about what they are saying and how they are saying it, arguing people should not be in danger of being attacked, vilified and stereotyped because of who they are. So here's the thing, Chin Tan, you piece of shit. I got tortured by the New South Wales state, and it's on the New South Wales Supreme Court record when you sit there twiddling your thumbs like a bumbling fucking idiot. We've stood our ground all the way through to the Supreme and District Courts in multiple states around this country to define this very government as a war criminal on an international stage, and you sit there like a bumbling fucking idiot. You make comments of rhetoric in relation to our Constitution and the line of authority defined in international law and defined on the Supreme Court record, and you refuse to acknowledge it like a bumbling fucking idiot. You, you refuse to recognise in law, in international law, a, a standing at which you are supposed to uphold and stop Things like torture from occurring inside places like jails and corrective services facilities. But you allowed that to occur, Chin Tan, and that was documented on the court record. And no, no, rec no consequences have come to those that got involved in international war crimes because you're a bumbling fucking idiot, Chin Tan. You sit there with a realm of air of arrogance and speak this rhetoric over our constitution at which our line of authority was defined on the Supreme Court record and you ignore that line of authority. Nay, you attack that line of authority. You, you wholly attack that line of authority to the point of forced medical procedure and torture documented on the court record of the Supreme Court of New South Wales, Chin Tan, and you've done fuck all nothing about it. You've done fuck all nothing about it. You're a, you're a useless mouthpiece, Chin Tan. You're a useless waste of space, Chin Tan. Your Human Rights Commission is a wasted and failed command, Chin Tan. A, a totally failed command, a, along with all the other failed commands in this country, Chin Tan. You're a total disgrace to the humanity that is this enslavement that you're supposed to look after. You're a total disgrace to the law, Chin Tan. You're a total, total disgrace to the line of authority established in, in this constitution, defining war crimes to have occurred within this very territory that 
continent of Australia, Chintan, and you're a failed command in that respect, Chintan. You fail to uphold international law. You fail to address international obligations, and you fail to uh, adhere to those laws within this country, uh, and therefore allowing, allowing these government officials to get away with international criminal offences, I- including torture and forced medical procedure against innocent civilians in in treating them like enslaved prisoners of war. This stuff is disgusting stuff at which you're supposed to address, Chin Tan, but you fail to do so. And you might use the excuse of, oh, no one ever put that on my desk. It was put on the Supreme Court record and your ears should have pricked up the moment those decisions were made final on the Supreme Court record, defining members of the New South Wales state to be war criminals at international law, defined on the court record by justice of the Supreme Court of New South Wales, Chintan. You are a failure, Chintan. And your remarks in relation to a line of authority into our constitution, a total negligence of that line of authority and giving the authority for a minority population in somewhat way to undermine the constitution of a people that are already self-determining before your eyes, you have committed a grave mistake, Chin Tan. And this is the reality, everybody. That They don't seem to realise that the law is catching up with them. The law is on the table and there's nothing they can do about it. As it circles around them like vultures ready to pick on their bones. Here's the rub. What Commissioner Tan's really doing here is suggesting that anyone who mentions race in the context of this overtly race-based proposal is encouraging racial vilification. And in doing so, he is making a classic identity politics play to silence anyone who dares to harbour a concern about the wisdom of granting different democratic rights in this nation to different groups on the basis of... So she's right. Instead of making a wanky political statement, the Human Rights Commissioner should have just defined the law as it stands. And in the Criminal Code, under Volume 2, you'll find the crime of apartheid. And we already discussed the criminal offences of trying to undermine a referendum. Now, this can't be a referendum if no specific change to the Constitution has been defined. How can you go to a vote on an open question? That there is no question to be answered. So it cannot be a referendum. And the Human Rights Commission is not even pulling up on that, let let alone everything else. I I mean, this is the direct indication that this is manipulated as a communist agenda and anybody that steps in the way is manipulated into control and told to shut the fuck up. And this is what you're seeing across the board while they manipulate this with a misinformation bill where they try and shut me up, Albo. You, you dare try and shut me up and I'll see you before a court and we'll let a judge decide what's true or not. How's that sound, Albo? Race. By labelling anyone who enters this debate with a concern for racial division a racist, rather than someone committed to an Australia where all citizens have equal rights, he shames sensible people into silence and creates the false impression that everyone thinks it's a good idea. And again, she's right. The Human Rights Commissioner believes that it's racist to not install apartheid. You are racist if you don't accept apartheid. This is coming from the Human Rights Commission that is supposed to uphold international law and the criminal code in response to crimes against humanity and international war crimes like apartheid. 
I mentioned this at the top of the show. A vicious war of words has broken out in the legal profession after a prominent Sydney barrister, Brett Walker SC, branded arguments against the proposed model of the voice as racist. It's a similar play from so many of the voice proponents. Label those against or merely just questioning the voice as racist. However, my next guest is not one for taking this sort of alleged slur lying down. Sydney barrister Louise Clegg has issued a stinging rebuke to Walker writing to the New South Wales Bar Association saying that his comments are grotesque and asking the professional body to, quote, issue a public rebuke to Brett personally for bringing the profession into disrepute and for the unacceptable moral bullying towards lawyers who may wish to openly engage in this monumentally important public debate. I'm thrilled to say Louise Clegg joins me now. Well OK, so again, same story. It's racist if you don't accept apartheid, which is racism. So it's racist not to accept blatant racism. And this is going on in the legal fraternity uh, enough for this constitutional lawyer, who will challenge in a second, to make a complaint to the Bar Association in relation to a colleague stating to the legal profession that it's racist if you don't accept apartheid. Well, you're right. It is a monumental debate, Louise. We've seen in the political sphere this uh, shaming of people and using the racism claim. But if there's something as, as substantial of this before the Australian public to change our constitution, surely we want our best legal minds debating it, not being shut down. Um, it, it's a shocking state of affairs, Peter. Um, and that's why I decided to make the letter that I sent to the Bar Association on Saturday afternoon um, public um, because I I thought to myself, well, I don't think that this will go anywhere with the Bar Association. Um, and so it would go into the, the ether and most people then wouldn't, other than insiders who were watching this and engaged in this, wouldn't be aware of what he had done. Um, so, mm. look, he, it was reported in the Australian Financial Review that he had said that barristers or lawyers were being racist. Um, he's he's um, come back from that, and I think perhaps there was a bit of misreporting. To be fair to him, because because I'm I'm staying fair and classy, <laughs> Peter. Um, so to be fair, he has just said yes, that are. the ideas are racist. So I think look, that's that's a distinction without much meaning. I think if he put that submission um, before the High Court, they might say that too. So I'm not quite clear on what this lawyer's done. And it seems like a plant, you know, like one of these government lawyers going and screaming chicken little to all the other lawyers and all the other lawyers have gone, no, not putting up with that crap. Go to the Bar Association, complain. Bar Association's obviously going to do fuck all about it. So she's come out to the media to talk about a complaint that has been made in relation to a barrister that's hit the media, I suppose, and because of a lack of clarity in the matter, she seems to think that she needs to make clarity in the matter. Um, so he, he's he's so, troubled so, by some of the ideas that I am, well, the, the arguments I am running. Um, and I'm concerned that the voice is too big and I feel it's, as a constitutional lawyer, a public lawyer, I, I think it's quite radical and it's certainly experimental. So, radical and experimental from a constitutional lawyer that should have been involved in some sort of process to bring about this referendum in the first place. And I think other people have said this. Why has no constitutional conference taken place wherein all of these types of people can sit down at a table and actually provide you with the legal change that you could be wanting to make and in a fashion that put it in history forever 
And this is the part that I can't comprehend. And it's because it's come from Lydia activism, communist, greeny ideologies, instead of foundational law that would have seen our sovereign people that gave up their sovereignty somewhat seen to be part of the Commonwealth in that dream time sovereignty. And you've all fucked that up. I am not currently on the no case. I'm saying there's a much an easier way and a much more uh, um, a much more uh, a gentler way of doing it. But they don't like what I'm saying to argue that. And um, and I've been making arguments based on material by gamma model academics, the people who are involved in drafting this course. So I've been saying, for instance, um, I'm just reading here um, from a gamma um, academic, if I can call her that, Professor Appleby, um, she said that this was a, going to be a foundational institution of state. Um, that's a quote. Um, it will provide a, a, an important reordering of the hierarchy of state and provides for a form of the transformation in Australia's established constitutional institutions. So that set me thinking, well, what kind of body is this? And so I've made a quite a carefully constructed argument, um, including Peter at a, um, and a yes. So here we have another totally ignorant constitutional lawyer who cannot see the line of authority in God and how that anchors the Constitution in the world at law. And this gives her a foundation at law to do her constitutional lawyer work. And she is totally, totally ignorant of it. And the fact that she can point out these things and not follow through with any knowledge of how those things are founded right, to know that she should have been saying no straight off the top for trying to undermine the line of authority in God and replacing it with a foreign executive branch of God in a dream time that is not of you. And we saw in the last episode that these Aborigine wholly believe they are inviting you into their country rather than recognizing you as being the people that defended their right to be on the land in World War I. And they don't comprehend that if that kicks off again, who the fuck's going to save them next time? Themselves? I highly doubt it, given the mind m manipulation and drunkenness and ineptness of their entire world. It does not correlate to the experience and knowledge and breadth of power that is in what could be considered an old and aged institution knowledge in corporations and warfare. I don't think this quite adds up to all these people that are trying to fuck with something so dangerous in God. S camp conference where the room was full of indigenous, oh, half full of indigenous people, um, and Professor Greg Craven, who is a constitutional law scholar, was there, and I made this argument mm -hmm. in front of them. So I felt very comfortable making this argument that it is a fourth arm of government, and I don't over it. I say it's an advisory arm of government, so I'm not. I'm not uh, being. Um, I'm, I'm not engaging in a scare campaign. I just think that's how we should characterise it. So she admits she has another constitutional lawyer sitting down at another meeting with Aborigine and not defining very clearly the line of authority that upholds that constitution in international law. And you all entertain the undermining of that very executive and royal prerogative authority at that law. And the sad th the sad thing, the totally sad thing for all of you academic constitutional retards is that people like me walked into the Supreme Court and are able to speak highly and above everything you believe and can demonstrate your world to be a joke. 
You are not constitutional lawyers. You are corporate lawyers. You got no idea about God and foundations and the foundations found in that very constitution and how you are undermining it all today. And I make that direct accusation of this woman on the screen. I mean, th this is the kind of joke that it is. Louise Clegg, barrister, constitutional barrister that's full of shit in front of everybody. And God, it gets my goat that these people will not talk about God and will not talk about the line of authority established in that king's domain at that stone of remembrance, how they can deny all of these things and sit there and speak this stuff continuously is beyond me when they know full well that if they were fronted with me in front of a courtroom, they'd have a hard problem because this is something that I will directly attack Louise Clegg's knowledge over. Who do you serve, Louise? Who is the defined sovereign at law? What is the line of authority in the very constitution? And why are you not addressing that line of authority wherein at the preamble it says, relying, relying, relying on the blessing of Almighty God. Can you define that for us at constitutional law, Louise Clegg? This is where I start to get really annoyed because these academics sit on TV preaching all of this crap, entertaining the demise of your constitution instead of standing up and pointing it out for the very treason that it is. Senator, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So let's just clear this up at the start. Are you going to join with Peter Dutton in voting no? Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely so anyone not. who suggests you're in the no camp I am not in the no camp. I've never been in the no camp and my position has been clear all along and that is that we need a treaty in this country. So what's your position then on the question that's before, or what's going to be before all Australians? On See, like I said, no one's pointing out the blatant treason that is going on in front of all of you while they ignore a line of authority that they rely on in the blessing of Almighty God as defined in the Constitution Act itself. This laid out a line of authority to the Constitution at which all of these people from their communist agenda are trying to undermine. And I will stand in any courtroom in the country and define this on the court record against any of these constitutional idiots that we keep seeing, like this uh, Nicholas and this Clegg and, and a lot of others that we've seen in the videos here talking a lot of horseshit about your constitution and acting like it's the constitution to a company instead of the constitution to a country under the reliance of the blessing of Almighty God. Uh, and they haven't addressed this God yet, given that they take oaths to our God, ta take oaths over a Bible, over the scripture which then defines a stone of remembrance in a king's domain and God, king and country already defined on the court record. So these people have no excuses anymore to ignore what is on the Supreme Court record. This is the unfortunate truth. Now, I've got three more videos to go through that are kind of like pushed to the back because they are a bit longer. And I might introduce each one of them individually. And rather than taking clips from them, listen to their entirety because the importance that they are in the grand scheme of what we're looking at can't be underestimated. You, you are being played, by f uh, played for fools by communists and people that have conspired together directly to undermine your line of authority as a people in God directly. And if you lose that connection as a people 
to this debacle. You, you will find your world change very quickly uh, as you lose uh, any self-semblance of self-determination in yourselves, let alone as a people. Uh, and this is you in your mind having freedom of thought uh, and having freedom to move. Uh, and all these things that may be impacted by this communist agenda that you are seeing brought around the entire world uh, as they wokeified everything that they touched. You know, it was like the opposite to the Midas effect. Everything these people touch turns to shit.